Hey, what's up guys? It's Cliff and Brian from Trail Grid Pro. Super pumped to be back with you today. We've got our good friend Bruno from Kicker with us here today, and we've got something for you that you guys have been asking for. We've been selling Sony bundles for the Toyota community for years with wild success. And we've been asked countless times, what about speakers? Well, we're super excited to bring you a plug and play speaker kit for Toyota 4Runners 2014 to 2022. And with us today is Bruno to talk through why you need this. Thanks, Cliff. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. I'm glad that we partnered up so that way we can actually go out to the Toyota community and actually bring in uh, uh, upgraded speakers. The nice thing about the speaker sizes from Kicker is that all the speaker sizes uh, actually match the vehicles themselves and we have all the right sizes. So basically what you're seeing here is you have every single speaker inside of your vehicle with the actual harnesses for the factory plugs. So these guys have already taken all the legwork out of it to make it as easy as pie. So what you're actually seeing here are your front door speakers, which are your six by nines in the doors, your dash speakers where your two and three quarters, rear door speakers, which are your six and a halfs, and then also your tailgate speakers, uh, which are also six and a halfs. One thing that you will notice is that all these will come with their actual brackets. So for you guys that are installing it, take it out, put the screws back in. These guys have made it as easy as pie. Can't make it any easier than what it actually is. Like Bruno just said, Cliff and I, we did a lot of research to figure out exactly what we needed to do to make this plug and play, just like our Sony bundles. So when you receive your kicker speaker bundle, you'll get the brackets, the speakers, any of the pigtails that adapt the speaker to either, like you can see here, the one for your tweeter, you get the one for your doors. These connectors will already be soldered and shrink tubed to the crossovers where, where they apply for the front door speakers as well as the tweeters. Everything is included in the kit when it shows up to your door to make this install as seamless and as easy as possible. All right, so the two main components of this bundle that we were trying to accomplish was one, making it plug and play, and we've touched on that. The second most important component of this bundle is that it had to be great. So Bruno, we've got some of our factory speakers here uh, that came out of my personal Toyota 4Runner that we're replacing with the KS line from Kicker. What can Toyota 4Runner owners expect when they transition from factory speakers, either non-JBL or JBL amplified, and transition to the KS line from Kicker? That's, a, that's actually a really good question, Cliff, and, and I'll dive a little bit into that. So one of the things that you're seeing here is you've got your factory speakers, we got your dash speaker here, and your six by nine in front door, and then also your six and a half, which is your rear door speaker, and then also your tailgate speaker. So I'm gonna ask these guys to go ahead and flip those things around, just so that way you can actually see the build quality in the product. Now what's gonna be upgrading, or what we're actually gonna be upgrading is everything here. So I'm gonna start with the front doors. So our speakers, when we flip it around, actually have a much larger magnet than the actual factory speaker. What this allows us to do, this is allows the speaker to actually play a little bit lower and handle more power. Even if it's a JBL system or non-JBL system, we'll be able to handle the power either way. The other thing is with the rear speakers, I'm gonna grab this here, which is our six and a half, it's the exact same thing. So what we're going to do is we're gonna get a larger speaker better mid bass response and we're going to flip it over here you're going to also notice that this has a factory tweeter and we're actually changing the tweeter to a silk dome tweeter which is a little bit more smoother sounding and the actual speaker itself is actually more um, it's more efficient so it actually will work better with the factory system as well too you've got the factory plug so even when you're looking at all these factory speakers here you see the plugs here on each one of them these guys have already done the legwork for you here it is everything's all plug and play even down to the crossovers for the two and three quarters and then also the six by nines as well too. All right, so we've just established that by partnering with Kicker, which we're super excited about, we've been able to bring you a completely plug and play system for your Toyota 4Runner. And that plug and play system is a premium system when compared to a factory JBL or non JBL system that you currently have in your Toyota 4Runner. And now we're gonna show you how easy this system is to install in your Toyota 4Runner in your garage. The first speaker that we're going to replace with this new kicker system is the two and three quarter speaker that's located up here in the dash. So to get access to this, 
We're gonna use a small panel tool to pry off the grill cover of this tweeter. So gently insert it below the grill. We're just gonna slowly work it around. It's a couple of clips that hold this in place. And then this speaker cover will come off. We'll set that to the side. So you'll notice there's these two bolts here are gonna hold the entire tweeter assembly in place. So we'll go ahead and remove those with our 10 millimeter. We're gonna put these in a safe spot. We do not wanna drop these in the dash. We're gonna go ahead and pull the entire assembly out of the dash. Carefully working it up and over. Here's the factory connector. We're gonna go ahead and depress the tab and we'll pull that out of the way. All right, now we have our tweeter assembly removed. The next step that we need to do is actually remove this outer bracket from the tweeter. So to do that, I'm gonna be using a T20 Torx screwdriver and we're gonna remove these two screws right here, which will release the tweeter from the bracket. Got those two screws removed. Now I just need to work this part of the bracket off of the speaker. And then you'll notice that this connector is also attached. So we're gonna use a small flathead screwdriver to release the clip and then it should slide right off just like that. So we'll go ahead and set this tweeter to the side. In your bundle that you received from us, you will find the tweeters will be enclosed in their little cardboard housing for shipping. Uh, you'll see they have a little pigtail attached directly to the speaker. And then you will also find the appropriate connector with the crossover already connected. The ones that are with the tweeters, that's what we're gonna use. So, all right, so to get this tweeter mounted into all of its bracketry to go back in the dash, we're first gonna start with the factory bracket that we removed from the truck. We're gonna make sure that that's in the appropriate orientation to how we removed it. And we're gonna get the supplied adapter out and you're just gonna line this up. I had to finesse it. You'll see that the little tabs lock into position. And then we're going to feed our tweeter through, being careful of the connector here on the back. And then we're gonna take the top portion of the bracket. We're also line it up and this is going to sandwich the two mounting brackets around the tweeter which is going to more securely hold it into the bracket assembly. And then we'll replace our small black screws. All right so there we go we got the two screws connected. Now we're going to work on our wiring. Go ahead and remove the twist tie from the wires. We're gonna grab our supplied connector with our crossover. All right, so this is as easy as on each connection, you have a male and a female spade connector. All we're gonna do is match up the connectors. Give it a nice little wiggle, make sure the insulation is covering. So there we have it all connected together. We're gonna to go ahead and make our speaker connection. Simply push the connector together, give the tug test, it is definitely in there. So now we have our connection made. We're going to gently tuck all of our wires back into the dash. An important note here is we wanna tuck them into a place where they're not gonna obstruct the connection points here. We don't wanna put screws through our brand new speaker wires. Go ahead and put this back into place. And then it's time to replace our two 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and start both of them with our fingers. And just snug them up. They don't have to be super tight. All right, that looks awesome. Let's go ahead and grab our speaker grill and we're gonna slide the end in towards the windshield first and then push it down until you hear it snap back into place. Now we have our tweeter installed that was nice and easy. So let's go ahead and move to the driver door and we'll get these new six by nines put in. Obviously our first step with this process is we have to remove the door panel to get access to the speaker. So 
let's go ahead and get started with that. Up here by the A pillar, we're gonna go ahead and remove this cover piece here. Simply just give it a little pull. You can see it's just got a couple of retaining clips there. Set that out of the way. Next thing we need is a small flathead screwdriver. There's three bolts that we need to remove. So if you look right here around the handle assembly, the first one is actually behind the door handle. The second one is right here. You see this little square cutout. And then third one is if you follow the grab handle straight down, it's right here under the grab handle. So to remove these, we'll start with the one up top. We're just gonna gently insert and pry out. And then that will fall down out of the way. The one at the bottom of the grab handle is the same way, starting from the top, just a gentle pry. And that door will pull out and fall down out of the way. And the last one behind the door handle, right by the locking button, just give it a gentle pry and this inside cover will come off. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these three bolts. As a note, when you put your door panel back together that the silver screw goes behind the door handle. All right, now that we have those three screws out of the way, the next step is we're gonna release all of the pop clips around the edge of the door. Best way to do this is just find a, a spot where you can get your fingers between the door panel and the door. We're just gonna gently pry outward. You'll hear the clips start to release. We're just gonna work our way around. All right, we'll work our way all the way around both the bottom and both sides. You'll hear all the popping noises of the retaining clips releasing. Again, it does sound a little violent, but that is normal. Once we have all of the clips released around the outside, just going to gently lift up on the door panel and free it of the top of the door. All right, now that we have the door panel separated, we have a few more things that we need to disconnect to fully remove the door panel. Some of those are gonna be these two cables right here that control the locking and the door mechanism. To release these, you know, slide the connector up out of its slot, and then this little ball will pop right out of the handle. We're gonna do the same thing with those. You have one connection here, just to press the tab and pull it out. And then the last one is your light. We have a tab right here on top. We're gonna to depress the tab and disconnect the light. Sometimes when you pull these door panels off, just like in the case here, the retaining clip stayed in the door. So we'll go ahead and get our pop clip remover and we'll go ahead and remove it from the door and then place it back into the door panel. So that way when we're ready to reinstall our door panel, everything locks away nicely. Here's our factory six by nine that we're gonna be replacing. First step we're gonna do is remove the wiring harness. So you'll see the retaining tab here, just push it in. We're gonna remove the four bolts that hold this into the door. Give it a gentle pull and this speaker is now out of the truck. Our next step is we're going to use a provided speaker adapter that Kicker gave to us in the box here. You'll notice on one end we've gone ahead and trimmed off a couple of tabs uh, that were in the way when they come out of the box. So we went ahead and took care of that for you. Now when you put this on you want to use this end that we cut the end off and that's going to be positioned down towards the corner of the door. Another thing that we wanna watch out for when we mount this is where this wiring harness goes through. There's actually this plastic tab. I wanna make sure that the speaker adapter ring goes behind the tab and not over top of it. So we'll go ahead and we'll just line our holes up here. We're gonna be using these, not the, not the long oval, but the holes right next to it. And we'll go ahead and start the factory screws back in. We're just gonna start these loosely for now so that we make sure we get all the holes lined up. All right, now that we have that in place, our next step 
is we're going to grab our new kicker 6x9 and then below your 6x9 when you took it out of the box you'll also find the crossover that goes with it already connected to the factory plug. So we're going to flip over our speaker here and you'll see that on the back side here you have a quarter inch and an eighth inch spade and those will just match up to the spade connectors on your harness. Just going to give these a nice little wiggle. See it goes all the way into place. So we have those connected. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to orient our speaker the way that we want it. What we need to do is we need to route the plug here out from behind the speaker. So if you look in the adapter ring you'll actually see these little cutouts on the ends. We're going to just route our wire right through there just like that. So we'll go ahead and actually connect this so we know we have the appropriate amount of wire. And then provided in your kit as well will be a pack of these black screws. These are gonna go right here in the corners of the speakers. Pro tip when putting the speaker into the speaker adapter ring, take your time, don't put too much pressure. You don't wanna skip off of the screw and puncture through the, the cone or any part of the speaker because now we got to replace the speakers again. So take your time and just go easy. So again, just like the other screws, we're going to just line all of these up, start them a little bit. all four of our screws tightened up just want to give one final fitment check make sure we're nice and flush all the way around and then we'll go ahead and tighten down our bracket all right bracket sits nice and flush to the door panel so let's go ahead and get our door panel back on and we'll move to the rear doors now we have our six by nine installed in our front door let's go ahead and get the door panel back on to do this, we're just gonna simply reverse the steps from when we took it off, making sure that we connect our two cables as well as our two connections for the lights and the locking mechanism. All right, so what we've done is, you saw me there, we hung the top of the door along the window channel, got it nice and snug all the way across. And then we're going to slowly rock the door down and then we can start pushing in the pop clips all the way around the edges. Give the middle of the door a push. There's a few in the middle. Again, just go around, double check to make sure we got everything connected. Let's go ahead and replace the three screws that held in the door. Again, we're gonna start with the silver one, goes behind the door handle. One thing to note here, if when you put your door panel back on, you, you should be able to see through these holes and make sure they line up. If they don't line up, something about the door panel is not right, go ahead, take it back off, try it again, make sure that these three holes are lined up before we run a screw through it. Um, we definitely want the door panel back on the right way. Get the last one. those snug down and we'll just fold our cover back up snap it into place same thing with that one get the one behind the door handle and let's not forget about our corner trim here just going to line up the two clips and it goes back into place. Another important note, 
just make sure that after you get all of your door panels reassembled, go ahead, turn your truck on, make sure that all of your windows, door locks, all the mechanisms within the doors work properly. Uh, definitely don't want to get down the road and then figure out that your windows won't roll back up if you rolled them down for the install like we did. So now that we got this front door cleaned up, let's go ahead and repeat the process on the back door. Let's go ahead and repeat the same process on the back door. So again, we're going to go ahead and start by removing the three bolts. Again, insert, and then these little doors will pull out of the way. our screwdriver and remove and just like before we find a gap here and we'll start releasing the clips again it sounds violent but we're just making sure that all the clips get released all right, now we can see the door is mostly free. We'll work it up and off the edge of the window. Same process as the front door. Go ahead and depress the tab on top of the connector there. Moving to the cables. Slide them up out of the slot. Rotate until the ball comes out. And that is it on this one. Now that we are right here at our speaker, go ahead and depress the tab here on the top and unplug our speaker. On this one, you have three screws holding it in. Go ahead and remove those. And again, we're going to pry. There we go. Go ahead and set our speaker out of the way. Grab our provided speaker adapter ring. And now we just need to line up the holes. So what we're going to be using for this is where the tabs were previously removed. It's going to go up towards the speaker plug. And then you'll notice here that these three little cutout holes will line up along with this oval down here. So we'll go ahead and start the factory screws that we took out. Next thing we need to grab is the provided speaker wire adapter. This is going to go from your factory plug here to your speaker. So again, same thing with these as the other speakers. You notice you have a quarter and eighth inch connector on your adapter. These rear doors do not have a crossover like the front doors. All you need is the speaker adapter to go straight to the speaker. Again, we need to run the speaker wire from behind the speaker out to the front so that we can make this connection. And just like the other one, you'll see that there's little cutouts both here and here. So we can orient our speaker how we would like. And we'll be using these U-shaped spots here on the outside of the speaker. Make sure that we have plenty of tail to get to the connection and then we'll use the again the provided screws to go ahead and mount the speaker start these a little bit of the way and then finish it once we make sure that they're all lined up so 
So one small issue that I ran into while we were trying to put in this rear door speaker is this one screw down here was hitting the frame or the you know the inside door panel the metal part when you try to put the screw all the way in which is actually pushing the mounting surface of the speaker out uh, which will later be troublesome because we won't be able to get the door panel back on so the quick and easy fix to that is if you have a 7 ths drill bit it's going to be smaller than the hole in the mounting bracket so all we need to do is just go straight in the hole and then we're just going to drill out a little bit so that the screw can work its way all the way through the inside of the door panel. All right. So now we're going to put our screw back in. And you see that pulled the speaker up nice and tight. There's no gap here with the mounting bracket to the door. Everything sits nice and flush. And now we'll be able to put the door panel back on the way that it's supposed to. With our new kicker speaker installed in our door, it's time to go ahead and put on the door panel. On the rear doors, you just have the one connection here and the two cables for the locking mechanisms. So we'll go ahead and reattach our plug, hook the ball in, and then the little slot there, and those will pop into place. snapped into place. Same thing as the front door. We're going to hang this edge here along the top of the where the window is and then we'll work the door panel down into place. We're going to start here along the little quarter window. There's a clip here. We're going to hang that. Now we have that one kind of pull back. We're going to squeeze Get that middle one, and then again, we're going to lift up just a slight bit, squeeze, and now that is hanging on the top. Now we can move to our retaining clips along the sides. Last step on our rear door is replacing the screws and the covers. Again, the silver one goes behind the door handle. And then the two black ones go in the other slots. Place our cover pieces. Snap back into place and we're done with the rear doors. All we have left to do is the rear hatch. Last but certainly not least, we have the rear hatch speakers. We're almost there, so let's go ahead and get these installed. There's a couple things that we need to remove before we can drop the actual hatch cover. There are gonna be the lights here in the door as well as the pull handle. We're gonna use the flathead screwdriver here. On We're gonna start with the pull handle. There's a little uh, trim piece that goes around it Again, we're just gonna gently insert the screwdriver. And this little U-shaped piece will come right out. Now, the next thing we need to do is there is a 10 millimeter bolt that holds in the pull strap. We're gonna go ahead and take it out. So you'll see there, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. There's a little L bracket that has the pull strap attached to it. All of that comes out. And obviously we're gonna reinstall this in a minute. Next thing we need to do is remove our hatch lights. When removing these, coming from the driver's side of the vehicle, we're gonna use our screwdriver. You'll see there's kind of a little cutout in the light. Push the screwdriver up. And then we're going to remove the light by depressing the tab. If you look at the light, this is the orientation that it was in the hatch. When we push the screwdriver in, 
we're actually depressing this metal retaining clip and that's what's gonna let us take the light out of the hatch. So we'll go ahead and set that on that side. And again, coming from the driver's side, this is gonna be the same process. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that light. Next step is to remove all of the retaining clips, again, around the outside. If you have some sort of pry tool, I'm just gonna find a spot where we can gently work it in. So we can get our fingers in there and then just keep working around the edge. All right, and it's all freed up. Now we just need to get it off the lip of the window. Go ahead and pull it down. And then again, check, make sure. All right, we have all of our retaining clips. I'm gonna go ahead and set the cover off to the side. With the rear hatch cover removed, uh, you'll now see that the speakers are exposed. If you notice over here on the other side, we've already actually gone ahead and installed one of the new Kicker KS series speakers in the hatch as part of the research and development for this project. So today we're gonna be showing you how to install the speaker on the driver's side. Now keep in mind the process for installing all of these speakers that we've done today is gonna to be the exact same, just on the opposite side of the vehicle, but for simplicity, and keeping this streamlined, we're just gonna show you the driver's side of the vehicle today. So let's go ahead and finish up this one speaker. We'll get it all back together and then we'll go inside the truck and turn on some music. Just like all of the other speakers that we've done today, we're gonna go ahead and remove the plug. And on the rear hatch, just like the rear door, we have three screws that are gonna hold the speaker assembly to the hatch. Go ahead and remove those. Give it a gentle pull. Go ahead and set this one to the side. And same process, we're gonna use the included speaker adapter and we're gonna go ahead and line our holes up. And we're gonna use the same mounting spots as the rear door. So it's gonna be the three little circles that are kind of next to each other for two of our spots here. And then this long oval tab here. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. We'll hold our speaker up and we'll figure out where we need to route our wire. and start our screws that are gonna hold our speaker into the bracket. And now that we have all four of our screws started, we'll go ahead and tighten everything down. And do some final fitment on our speaker wire. One important note when you do the passenger side of the rear hatch, you wanna make sure to route your speaker wire connection away from there's a pre-threaded hole here in the top of the hatch that's where your pull handle is going to uh, go back in here in a second so we want to make sure we have all the wires clear of that we don't want to get the wires pinched in there or damage them when we're trying to reinstall the pull handle now that we have both of our speakers in the hatch let's go ahead and put the cover back on we'll get this thing all buttoned up 
So reversing the process for putting the panel back on. Just like the other doors, we're gonna hook the top edge here along the window, and then we'll slide it into place and then attach all of the pressure pins. We also wanna make sure that we pull our wires through that are gonna hook back up to our lights. So I'll go ahead and get this in place. Make sure that our light wires are coming through. So one thing I noticed when I was trying to put this back on, I originally had the rear hatch window down and the weight of the glass was actually pulling the glass towards the frame. So what I did is I went ahead and rolled the window back up and then it made it easier to get the clips along the edge of the window to seat properly. We've now pushed it back into place, give it a push around the edge, make sure that all of our retaining clips are back in place. We can reinstall our pull handle as well as our cargo lights. Little cover piece slides back into place. Grab our lights, connect the plugs, and then the side with the plug, we're going to hook into the cover and then that snaps into place like that so again the side with the wire coming out we're going to hook that in the panel cover and with that satisfying click it's now time to go enjoy these new kicker ks series speakers This is my first listen sure and what i know i mean we don't have the windows you know the windows are rolled down everything's rolled down and i i can still it's just it's like a full body for lack of a better term sure sound yep. i've got way better lows yep. than what we had before way better mids and the highs um just flow better it's like it, it just is all smooth Whereas before, it's like I had a lot of highs, and this was with the JBL Amplified. Right. Had a lot of highs, and you know, despite being JBL Amplified, the the mids and the lows weren't you know anything to write home about. Sure, and and the reason why is because a lot of uh, factory stereos or factory amplified systems, they they generally tend to boost everything up on the low end and then also on the high end, which gives you really good lows, it really gives you really good highs, but everything in the middle really is lacking. Mm -hmm. So what you're listening to or what you're experiencing is a more dynamic sound because not only are the lows there and the highs there that you've already come accustomed to, but everything that was missing before is now present. So even though we haven't changed or added an amplifier and volume wise, it's the same, it sounds so much richer because it's yeah. more of a dynamic sound that you're getting out of the speakers. Yeah. So just by changing the speakers itself without anything else is gonna make a dramatic difference in the way it's going to sound. Totally, totally, yeah. It's hitting on all cylinders. And again, we're running a 55 watt by four max power yep. um, head unit here. Sure. So nothing out of this world as far as power. So guys and gals looking to just switch out speakers and hoping for a better audio experience, you're absolutely gonna get it. You're 100% gonna get it every, every single time with just adding the speakers. Just changing the speakers makes a world of difference in the way it sounds. And that's really where Kicker kind of really hones in on is because we know that factory speakers are, are made, let's just be real, um, factory speakers aren't, you know, people aren't buying these vehicles for the sound right. itself. Right. They're gonna get exactly what the factory's gonna put in there. That's where we step in as kicker and say, okay, this is what we need to do to make the speakers sound better. Yep. And so we're gonna build a better speaker. And overall, at the end of the day, this is exactly what we're looking for. Is we're looking for you to be happy with it and enjoy exactly what you, what, what you purchased. Yeah, exactly. Like automobile manufacturers such as Toyota, like we love Toyotas, but they're not speaker companies. Not you know what I mean? Sure, they, they partner with uh, JBL to make, you know, do their best, but 
kicker is a speaker expert. Absolutely. And, and this clearly shows in this uh, installation, which Brian did awesomely and uh i'm super pumped uh to enjoy this yeah that's awesome man i'm glad that uh i'm glad that i was here to help you guys out yeah. and uh i'm glad that you're actually really happy with it yeah man absolutely appreciate it brother Absolutely. all right bro. man Another thanks one done. all right guys well that wraps up today brian did a great job with the install we've got all the specs and all the good stuff from bruno at kicker i love the system uh super happy with it we hope you guys will be as well this will be available on the shop at www.trailgridpro.com and you can put this in your toyota 4runner in a matter of hours in your garage thanks a lot for watching and as always guys have a blast out there